Hello and welcome to another open source web development hangout. Today we're working on the Western Friend website. We are writing a test suite for our content importers. We've worked through several sessions and improved our test coverage. I think we're at like 86% now. Um, there's a few sections left here. But most of the file has coverage now. <laughs> so 86.2% coverage here. It's pretty nice. Today we'll work through these media blocks. Essentially we um, need to write a test. That test uh, checks for an exception. And then write I think two tests to get into this image handler. So we've got a PDF handler and an image handler. In previous episode, I got on a little bit of a diversion with refactoring using GPT-4. Uh, it was really interesting and fruitful in that it led me to reconsider some of the aspects of this code, some of the ways that my code is written, in particular how I'm handling types, such as uh, beautiful soup types. Uh, in the long run, though, the refactor didn't work for a couple reasons. Um, it's kind of complicated, so I'm, I'm back to just a monolithic function with some small improvements and improved test coverage. I decided the priority was to improve the test coverage. Well, it's actually suggesting PDF URL. Let's check it out. Let's follow the guidance. Oops, so if I let Copilot write this for me a bit. Let's run that. So let's read through it. Uh, so our media blocks needs an, a list of URLs. This is because uh, in our spreadsheet, we have sometimes multiple multimedia attachments on a page. So it takes a list, even though we're only, it's a single item list. And then we should have a block of length one so we get the first item in that block and then make sure it's outputting a, a document link. I guess we're not going to check against the uh, URL, at least in the first case. So the block type, yeah, that's probably pretty safe. Uh, otherwise, we would need to look in the file name, expected file name. But as I re seem to recall, the Wagtail CMS it, um, sort of a adds a random identifier to the file name. It doesn't just take the file name directly. Okay, so yeah, the test failed. Not a big deal though. Uh, it was an, I don't know if you could call it an educated guess, but uh, nonetheless, auto-generated code isn't going to be perfect. You know, in human written code, that's of course not perfect. We're constantly making small mistakes that we just need to course correct, but that's how we develop in steps. We write the general idea, see if it works, fix the small things that don't work, rerun the code. This is a general pattern. So I think in a way, um, Copilot's not uh, significantly different from that. It's just making it faster to iterate and make those first mistakes and correct them. So I think it's an accelerator for the most part, when it has good input and when it has context specific code to patterns to follow, it can even be really accurate. Notice that, you know, I didn't type any of this. I just made one correction here and read through the content, read through the code to make sure it made sense. All right, deft parse media blocks with image URL. That's a good idea. Let's see what it says. And we will just go with that. And it looks like it might have had a better success this time. Let's see where Copilot guides us next. Okay, I always do that. That's kind of an annoying thing. Editing it in the uh, uh, the diff editor. All right, deft parse media blocks with image URL. That's a good idea. Let's see what it says. 
And we will just go with that. And it looks like it might have had a better success this time. Uh, I believe it'll raise here though. Let's see if it can... Huh. No, it's not really. I'm going to do that. Request exception. It shouldn't really do any of those. It will... Ah, oh, yeah. Okay, so here's the deal. I need to do this. Give it a little help hint with self raises exception. There we go. Okay, I think this is correct. Uh, it's going to try to parse the media blocks with an invalid URL. Hopefully, this example.com. <laughs> Will raise. Let's find out. the same error but you're erasing the trace back yeah raised by some wow that is a really good answer i should put that on stack overflow ask myself that and then answer that myself <laughs> somebody's got that same question on stack overflow that's an interesting way of generating stack overflow content and it's not like spam it's genuine subtlety hmm. let me know what your experiences are with Unit testing. I've avoided it for a long time in this project. But it's time. Because our content importers are mission critical. And there's some other mission critical code that I need to make sure works correctly before we can go live with this site. So while I was in prototyping mindset, I wasn't following test driven design. I was just, you know, writing, failing, writing, Failing differently, writing, failing a little bit differently, then sort of succeeding enough that it seems like it's working. But these are giving me the confidence that it's working. Okay, so let's step through this. Parse media block test case. Yeah, so we've got some globals. So we'll we don't even need one there so much. We will continue, right? To the next break point. So now it's using an existing database with some existing data in there. Also, have you worked with GPT-4 or Copilot to help you write, debug, and understand code? What's your experience there? We should get a raised error here. And it should be... Request exception. Uh, uh. So here's the input URLs, then we get empty media blocks back. We didn't get into this parse media blocks. I put a couple of part. Darn it. Darn it.
Parts media blocks doesn't raise. It continues. Okay, and I think that co-pilot knew that. At this point, we're capturing the exception. <laughs> co-pilot actually suggested the correct code here. Watch this. If I... Uh, an invalid URL should be giving me an empty array. And co-pilots, yeah, got that. Wow. Cert equal. Okay, wow. I should have just listened to co-pilot. I should have ran that test initially. Interesting. <laughs> So this is an this is a case of like not only the these large language models making me a little bit more accelerating the development process, making me more effective, but also helping me understand nuances and my own code better. There's in some ways understanding uh, the code better than I, the code that I've written. It has to be a list of strings. I don't think none works, but let's go ahead and let it write the code and make some small modifications. It has to be a list of str strings, so. A list of an empty string, how about that? There we go, one empty string. Parse media blocks should be empty also. Back to media blocks. Let's add that with empty. These are a bit verbose. They're helping me to know what I'm trying to do, basically. Okay, last test, and then we will be off to day job. Hey. Didn't save, didn't save. This is the issue. Just as much human error as machine error in this, this coding session. That's the that's the case though. With, that's how development goes. Even if I wasn't using Copilot, you know, GPT. We make a lot of mistakes, we make small mistakes, we fix those mistakes, and we just get used to that sense of failure, persistent failure, until we succeed. That's the challenge, is kind of getting through those a string of failures with slightly less failure each time until we get to the desired goal and repeating that on different levels one individual function an aggregate function project company you know i think it's the same mindset this has been another open source live code hangout in today's session we've improved test coverage for our media block parsers. If you'd like to follow along, you can go to github.com slash Western friend and check out the Western or the WF website project. Pull request number 630 here, pull requests. I'm waiting for some CI um, code analyzers to run. It's like two of them have run. We're still waiting on the code coverage analysis. It takes a little bit longer, but once that runs, this will turn to a check mark, hopefully. Uh, and I should have uh, information here, an informative com comment by um, CodeCov saying what this diff, this particular change in the code uh, has done to our test coverage. Thanks for checking out the live stream. If you're watching this later on YouTube, let me know your questions or comments. I'll try to respond promptly. Okay, have a great day. I hope you're doing well.